today we're looking at a bit of a weird project, so I'm sure you guys have seen some sort of terminal-based web browser, whether that be something like Lynx, W3M, or any of the others that are out there. But the problem with most terminal-based web browsers is they run in a text-only mode. Sometimes they can display images, but that's really about as far as you get. Now, there are some that do way more than others, but even so, they're all very, very limited compared to what you see with a graphical web browser. But today what we're looking at is something a bit different. So this is an application called Browsher. Browsh. I'm not sure how you actually say the name. I'm going to just go with Browsher for the rest of this video. What this technically is, is a fully graphical web browser rendered inside of your terminal. Now, because this is a terminal-based browser that doesn't want to be locked into technologies like UberZug or the Kitty Image Preview, anything graphical is going to be rendered with Unicode blocks. Now, you might be wondering why something like this even exists, because the way that I'm running it, running it locally, isn't actually the way it's intended to be used. And what you'll notice is when I click around and stuff, it's actually quite a slow web browser. So what it's supposed to be used for is by people that have really slow connections and really slow hardware. Slow to the point where really the only decent web browsing experience you can get is by using a text-based browser. But a lot of websites are very dependent on JavaScript and not having a JavaScript engine basically breaks all of those sites. The way this is supposed to be used is over SSH. One of the nice things about renting a server, even if you're in a country that has a really slow connection, what you can do is rent a server in a country that has much faster connections and much cheaper hardware and let that do all of the heavy lifting. And then even though your connection over SSH isn't going to be that fast and the page isn't going to look like it's updating that quickly, if you have a really, really slow connection, it's still going to be a much faster experience than what you would have got by running something like, say, Firefox or Chromium locally. Another benefit, which I think is a bit less important but still worth mentioning, is if you need to have a really really low power device. Like let's say you want to have a laptop and for whatever reason, like let's say you're doing some field work somewhere, you need that laptop to be away from wall power for a very long time. If you just run a regular web browser, that's going to chew away at your battery because browsers are just notoriously bad at using system resources. But something like Browser and then rendering everything on some server somewhere is going to use far less power because in reality, all Browser is really doing is rendering some Unicode symbols. Now, Browser isn't the most feature-rich web browser out there, but it does do the job. So if you want to go and scroll around, we can go and do so with the arrow keys, but you're probably never going to actually do so because you want to have your hand on the mouse. So this application doesn't actually have a way to go and select a link with a hotkey and then open it up like, say, Vimium and Qt and things like that have, you want to actually go and do so with your mouse. So you can also go and scroll with the mouse wheel as well. This is typically how I'll move around in it. And then let's say you want to go to the downloads here, then we can just go and click on that like we would for any other web browser and it does exactly what you'd expect. If you want to go back in your history, you can go and click Backspace, but I don't believe there's actually a way to go forward in your history, which is a really weird thing to miss out on. From here, let's go to a different website. So if we go and press Control L, it will focus on the URL bar. So let's go and go to, say, www.youtube.com, press Enter, and then it will go and open up that website. We can make a new tab by pressing Control T, and then cycle through our tabs by pressing Control Backslash. Now, if you have a bunch of tabs, it is going to get a bit annoying to go and cycle through them because you can only go and cycle forward. You can't go and jump to a specific tab or cycle in the other direction. Control W will go and close a tab you're currently on. So close that one. And then Control R will go and reload the tab you're on. Now, if we want to ever get back to the documentation, we can actually go and press F1 and that will open up the documentation website. So if you are like missing your internet connection, you won't actually be able to see the Browser documentation. I would have preferred to have this be something stored locally on your system, just so you can always go and check it. Now, in the regular way that Browser is being run, it does require a true color terminal just to make sure everything is being rendered properly. So if you're not using a true color terminal, it might behave kind of weirdly, 
One way you can go and address that though is by pressing Alt M and that will then go and run the application in monochrome mode. This will mean that none of the images will load up and none of the videos will load up properly, but the rest of the page will still be rendered just fine and for some terminals you might need to do this. Now I did mention videos and this is one of the interesting things that Browse Shark can actually do. So let's go back to the YouTube website and find something to watch. So let's say we want to go and watch this one right here. So let's go and click on that. And as we can see, it's even going to go and play the ads. So obviously you, you might have to go and deal with those. Uh, let's just find something else where the ad's not going to instantly play. Let's go and say, click on this one right here. Watch there be another ad. Okay, no ad this time. So as we can see, the video is just playing perfectly fine. Now, sometimes the page will render kind of weirdly and there'll be text on top of the video, but it's still so much better than you would have otherwise had if you had no way to actually watch videos with your connection. So if we do have this video playing and go and enable the monochrome mode, the video is still technically playing like in the background, but now we can't actually see it. So if we do want to go and enable the monochrome mode all of the time, all we need to go and do is pass in the dash dash monochrome option and then it will just launch in monochrome mode. Give that a second. As we can see, it looks like this. One thing you may never need to do, but it is a nice option to have there, is if you go and press Alt U, it's gonna go and switch the user agent from the desktop user agent to the mobile user agent. So on websites like say, let's go to, I think YouTube should do something, www.youtube.com and it should go and load the mobile version of YouTube. As we can see, m.youtube.com, and that means the layout will be a little bit different. So if you have, say, a smaller version of your terminal, it may make the website render a bit better. Now, the big question is, how does this actually work? Because while you could go and make your own full web engine, that seems like a lot of extra work, especially when Browser is mainly being maintained by one guy. Now, there are a few contributors as well, but the main developer is just a single dude. Dude, that's a lot of extra work for something that doesn't need to be done, especially when there are already existing web browsers like, say, Firefox, that you can go and run in a headless mode. And that's exactly what's happening here. Basically, Browser is just a front end for Firefox that just happens to be rendering everything inside of your terminal and happens to be rendering everything with Unicode blocks. By doing this, you're offloading most of the difficult work to Firefox, so you can let Firefox do things like rendering CSS, JS, HTML5, videos, images, even things like WebGL. Now, I can't tell you how well it's actually going to work. Videos, as long as you can make the player actually start playing the video, are going to work perfectly fine, but you might run into some issues with more complex websites, like say if you try to open up something like Google Docs, I don't know how well it's actually going to function, but if it's just viewing read-only websites, it's probably going to be fine. WebGL, probably going to be very hit and miss how well that actually works, though. I'm sure everyone would prefer a real web browser with a decent connection every single day, but if that's not an option for you, it's still better than nothing. Now, if you don't have a VPS lying around to run Browser, one way you can go and do so is over on Linode. If it runs on Linux, you can run on Linode. They have the distros you'd expect available, like Ubuntu and Debian, but also Arch and Gentoo because why not? They've got multiple server plans available, so whether you want to host a blog or a personal VPN, you know there's going to be one that fits you. Going forward, I'll be using Linode to host all of my community game nights. If you need help, Linode has 24-7, 365 support available by phone regardless of your plan size. So right now, you guys can get started on Linode with $100 credit by going to the link on screen or in the description down below. Linode was in the game three years before Amazon entered cloud computing, so you know they know their stuff. A huge thank you to Linode for sponsoring the channel. So I'm sure for most people watching this channel, this isn't going to be the most useful software out there, but I think projects like this deserve a lot more attention than they're otherwise getting. I think that's going to be pretty much everything for me, but before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David Montezar, Will, Brennan, Chico Bento, Jamie Joseph, Mitchell, Peter D, Stephen, Tony, Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support my work, the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, start, leave, pay, all of that sort of stuff. I bump my mic. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute. I bumped it again. If you want to watch my platform... I want to watch my channel on a platform that isn't YouTube. I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.